Hello and welcome to City Source. This program is presented to you by the City of Cape Girardeau and I'm your host Tracy Glenn. This particular show we're going to talk about the Lewis and Clark Bicentennial and with us today are our guests Brenda Schloss from the City's Division of Planning Services and Jane Jackson who's the director of the Cape County Archive Center. So why don't we start first about you all. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself Brenda. Okay. I've uh, worked with the city for it'll be 14 years in October. Um, and with the, with the Division of Planning Services on and off for, for most of that time. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with the Historic Preservation Commission um, for 13 years since, mm -hmm. since its inception, um, which is one reason I'm interested in Lewis and Clark. Um, I've also worked with the Bicentennial Celebration. Okay. Um, I guess you could call me the Historic Preservationist for the city. If anyone has any questions about historic preservation, they'll contact me. Fantastic. And Jane, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Okay, I'm a retired teacher from the Cape Girardeau Public School System and also Kelly Schools in Benton. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I taught English in Europe for a while. Uh, currently, I am the director of the Cape Girardeau County Archive Center. The county decided to have an archive center about three or four years ago. They built it and then they hired me to get to work there. And wonderful. I just, it's wonderful. And we've been able to uncover some documents related to the Lewis and Clark Bicentennial. Okay. Well, first of all, for our viewers out there who may not realize what's going on, one of you want to just talk about what the event is, what, what event is coming up, and then we'll talk about what's related to that, the Bicentennial. Well, there's really no, just one event. There's numerous events. Um, the main event will take, uh, take place over the weekend of November mm -hmm. 21st to the 23rd, mm -hmm. uh, November 23rd being the, the main day. Mm -hmm. um, Tell us what we're commemorating, Jane. Okay, we're commemorating the 200th anniversary of the Lewis and Clark Expedition. It was originally called the Corps of Discovery, but Lewis mm -hmm. and Clark were so became so famous that we kind of adopted that name. Uh, it, it started in 1803 and continued. Uh, they returned September 23rd, 1806 from the Pacific, mm -hmm. and they made discoveries and uh, of animals, plants, geography, uh, Native Americans that no one knew were there. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was like mm -hmm. today going to the moon or going to outer space. In 1803, it was the biggest thing to happen that had ever happened. Okay. Changed our world. Yes. Wonderful. And so we as a city are going to have a celebration of many different ceremonies, I understand, mm -hmm. and events. And is this something that other people are doing? Because Lewis and Clark went other places than just through Cape Girardeau. Is oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. It started in Monticello on January 18th of this year was the kickoff of the Lewis and Clark Bicentennial. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, reenactors are following the path that Meriwether Lewis took as he went down the Ohio River to Louisville, Kentucky. There will be okay. a big event there. I think there's one in Pittsburgh right, right now oh, wow. uh, or is, is soon to be. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a signature event in Louisville, Kentucky in October. Then there will be another uh, event at Fort Massac over in southern Illinois. Then they'll come around up the Mississippi to uh, Charleston, Missouri is having a, an event. Uh, and then ours, but ours will be the largest event in the state of Missouri uh, this year. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, tell us about the event. What's going to take place? We have um, a couple of different dates you said the celebration is mm -hmm. going to last. Tell us what exactly is going to take place. Well, uh, November uh, 23rd we're going to have the reenactment of when Lewis and Clark actually stopped in, in Cape Girardeau and met with Lewis Lormer who was the founder of Cape Girardeau. Okay. Um, that day we'll start with a kickoff with a horse parade. Mm -hmm. um, after the parade, uh, well, during the parade, actually, there's going to be a Latin Mass uh, given at St. Vincent's, Old St. Vincent's mm -hmm. Church, and that will be done complete in period garb. Um, mm -hmm. The priest will have a procession out of the church afterwards to meet Lewis and Clark and Lorimer mm -hmm. at the Red House. Okay. Um, and then he will do a, a blessing of the day. Um, the Red House Interpretive Center is our main project, and that uh, will be a museum. <coughs> Uh, that will be open actually the entire weekend. Mm 
Um, Jane, would you want to talk about the um, St. Charles reenactors coming Friday? Right. And the encampments? Uh, there will be an encampment of four reenactor groups down at the Red Star Boat Landing area. Mm -hmm. uh, the St. Charles reenactors who will bring, be bringing Lewis and Clark with them along with the number of men that were on the boats at the time they stopped here. Mm -hmm. uh, they will be encamping with the Zenon River Brigade, who, uh, Zenon River Black Powder Group, who are hosting the encampment. Also, the Crowley's Ridge from Dexter uh, reenactors will be there, okay. and the River or the Rock Ridge group from Southern Illinois will also be joining in the encampment. They will people will be able to visit the Lots encampment. We're looking at a hundred campsites. Wow! Um, and so people can go down and visit the encampment, mm -hmm. and then on Saturday and Sunday on Main Street, uh, the downtown area. There will be demonstrators, craft demonstrators. Uh, we're looking for musicians to perform 1803 period music. Uh, we'll have dancers. You can learn how to dance an old colonial type dance. Uh, then you can visit the Red House. It will be open for visiting. The uh, mm -hmm. River Heritage Museum has a Lewis and Clark um, uh, exhibit that you could visit. Mm -hmm. So the, all of those things will be going on on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we have invited the St. Charles Fife and Drum Corps to come, so we're working on uh, arrangements for that. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sons of the American Revolution, Daughters of the American Revolution will mm -hmm. be participating. We're looking for everybody to check in the back of their closets to get out mm -hmm. their 1803 yeah. outfits. <laughs> if you have a vest, yeah. if you have a, a, an old-timey white shirt, a vest, and a pair of pants, uh, knickers, you know, for the guys. Girls need long dresses or long skirts, maybe an apron, maybe a little uh, mob type cap bonnet. Mm -hmm. uh, if everybody can put something together uh, to uh, to pretend like they're in 18 the 1803 time period, mm -hmm. we want everybody to come out in in period costume if they can. Oh, and we do have patterns and um, some women who are willing to to help do sew up some to costumes, costumes. Uh, if you're interested in that. Right. So. Okay, well, that's great. really want to get into it. And we'll also have the uh, Shawnee and the Delaware camps. Right, we're, no, well, the Cherokee, Cherokee. I'm sorry, the right. Cherokee camps mm -hmm. set up across from uh, the Red House. Right, Fantastic. we've we've been talking to Shawnee people in Ohio who are mm -hmm. willing to come. And then we have local Cherokee people who are mm -hmm. wanting to participate as well. Uh, we are making contacts with Delaware and also Osage. Those were the four Native American tribes that were here. Wonderful. You mentioned that the St. Charles group would be bringing Lewis and Clark with them. Right. Is there one set of Lewis and Clark who is actually traveling, e traveling event to event then? Or does I, each community get their own person to portray? No, uh, the St. Charles group is bringing them. Uh, Scott Mandrell is a, a teacher in the St. Charles or St. Louis school system mm -hmm. who is taking off three years from teaching, I believe, to be Meriwether Lewis the entire length of the trip. Wow. He's a wonderful a person. Commitment. Very, very committed. And then I believe that the William Clark we will have is a descendant of William Clark. I, if, if I'm not mistaken, his name is Bud Clark, and he's from St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And he, um, I believe he'll be our, our William Clark. Wow, so these people are traveling from community to community. Right. And, and all across. On the river. On the river, yeah. They on have the three river. boats. Mm -hmm. And a keelboat. Mm -hmm. They have wow. a keelboat and two pirogues. And they will, uh, fortunately, these boats do have motors. <laughs> yeah. So they don't have to drag them up the river like yeah. the original crew did. But they will be dressed in period costume. They will be camping out everywhere they go. Uh, and they plan on being where Lewis and Clark were on the day that they were there 200 years later to the day. Boy, that is just amazing. It's going to be a cool trip on that river in November. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so are there other celebrations after hours? Or yes. Is ours um, after they left here, they camped out up at uh, Fort Kaskaskia on the Illinois side. There is no uh, proof in the journals that say the men went to St. Genevieve, but more than likely they did go into St. Genevieve because there would have been activity across the river and they would mm -hmm. have enjoyed going to have a drink of whiskey or whatever uh, in the town of St. Genevieve. So more than likely they went there, but it's not in the journals. Then they camped out as they went up the Mississippi River. Uh, they camped for the first winter at Fort Wood, or Camp Wood, which is uh, today's Hartford, Illinois. There's a wonderful mm -hmm. Lewis and Clark uh, interpretive center that I encourage people to go visit. Uh, then the, uh, there'll be a signature event in the spring there, and also in St. Louis and St. Charles. It's kind of a, a, a group effort up there. Uh, mm -hmm. Then they will go uh, day by day out from St. Charles along the Missouri River all the way to Kansas City. There'll be another signature event in Kansas City next year in 2004. 
And actually, I think we're being looked at as the model for what local communities yeah. can do to uh, make well, their event a successful event. That is fantastic. Let's talk a little bit about this ceremony. I know this has been going on for quite some time. Tell me, first of all, who decided that, we're, that we as a community are going to have this event, <laughs> how you go about planning such a massive set of events, and, and how, this all, how this all got started, why the city's involved, how we became involved, that Okay. That. Um, Dane's idea. In, 19, okay. <laughs> in 1999, uh, Jim Denny and Shannon Cave from the state uh, Department of Natural Resources mm -hmm. and uh, the Missouri Conservation Department came down and they put on a little program at the university that said that the state is going to put a marker and a, a, an interpretive panel at each campsite that Lewis and Clark made along the river. Mm -hmm. And they had traced these using you know, the journals and everything. And after that meeting, I thought, you know, we really need to do something. Uh, Linda Nash, who is our Lewis, local Lewis Lormer expert, and Dr. Frank Nickel were also at the mm -hmm. meeting. So we put our heads together after that meeting, and I said, you know, this is a national thing. This is, this is happening all across the country, from sea to shining sea. And Cape Girardeau got four pages in the journals. Mm -hmm. We should do something. So between Frank and Linda and I, we went around talking to organizations and groups, and then we came to the city, and we, our original idea was have a, to have a one-day reenactment on November 23rd, 2003. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> that, was, that was not big enough. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Linda had said, you know, we really need to build the Red House. We need to build something that can commemorate mm -hmm. the Red House. And so that's how it got started. We started deciding that we had, would have three goals, an archaeological dig on the side of the original Red House, which mm -hmm. is in the front, basically the front yard of Old St. Vincent's Church, and the church has given us permission to dig when the time is right. The second goal is to build the Red House Interpretive Center that will be a permanent museum mm -hmm. uh, for Lewis and Clark and for the whole area, the right. settlers and everyone for the here. District. Yeah, for the entire district. Mm -hmm. And then our third goal was the reenactment. So uh, we, ha would, we had meetings every now and then. We'd have a public meeting, and at one of the public meetings, uh, Steve Strom showed up, and we said, well, if you were part of our commission, what would you want to do? And he said, I want, want to build the Red House. And I went, you're the missing piece of our puzzle. And so that got started. So we put our heads together some more. We approached the city council with our idea and what we wanted to do, and they liked the idea and said, go forward. Uh, we wrote uh, three grants. And I have to, I, I really, Brenda has just been outstanding working with, our, with, with us in our group. When we were writing the grants, she was right there writing the grants with us. Uh, the city really has a jewel in this woman here. <laughs> She's just been great. Um, so she worked with us on the grants. We were awarded a grant, for a T21 grant for mm -hmm. almost $78,000. Wow. And we were awarded two grants of, from the uh, Missouri uh, Lewis and Clark Bicentennial Commission, a total of 25000 mm -hmm. The T21 grant is being used to construct, you know, to pay for the construction, the materials and everything, and the other grants are being used to furnish the house mm -hmm. uh, so that it'll be ready with panels and all, all manner of stuff. And uh, then the city generously donated the property for the built for building the red house. Wonderful. So the city has just been working with us, you know, hand in glove the whole time. Okay. So it's a joint project, and once the project is finished, then the uh, house will be a part of the park system, and okay. the CVB will help us in organizing tours and and getting mm -hmm. the the publicity out, the word, mm -hmm. so that people know we're here, but I think people already know we're here. Yeah. Uh, when I was at the CVB office just this week, just uh, Monday, um, Anita Mines, a volunteer there, mm -hmm. said, uh, you know, there were two ladies who came through here and they're doing the trail and they know about us and they came. So we have wonderful. no idea how many people are going to show up, but we have a feeling yeah. it's going to be a big group. That is wonderful. Yeah. Well, we need to take a short break. When we sure. come back, let's talk more about the Red House, what it will be, how big it will be, if this is something other communities have. Let's talk about that a little bit more, okay. and we'll be right back. Do you feel like your career is headed nowhere? nowhere. Is your job headed to a dead end? Dead end? Are you tired of the same old daily grind? Feeling trapped in a job that is going nowhere fast? 
Make the right turn for your future. Call the Career and Technology Center of Cape Girardeau today. We have a large variety of career choices to get you on the right track. What if you were in trouble? Where would you turn? In communities around the country, there is help available. Volunteers of America has been helping people build better lives for over 100 years. One of the nation's largest nonprofit charitable organizations, Volunteers of America builds stronger communities, restoring confidence and self-reliance to help people help themselves. Reaching out to abused and neglected children and families. Caring for the special needs of the elderly and disabled. Providing services to people who are homeless and in poverty. Across the nation, Volunteers of America helped over one and a half million people last year. There are no limits to what can be done. Find out how you can help change lives in your community. Call 1-800-899-0089. Volunteers of America. There are no limits to caring. Welcome an exchange student into your family. Learn about another culture in a fun and exciting way with Youth for Understanding International Exchange. I find myself wanting to learn more and more about other countries, and it's really interesting. Go global. Call 1-800-TEENAGE for this free booklet. Learn how you can welcome Youth for Understanding Exchange student into your community. Hello and welcome back to City Soars. We're here talking today with Brenda Sloss from the City's Planning Division and Jane Jackson from the Cape County Archive Center. We're talking about the Lewis and Clark Bicent Bicentennial celebration for this year and the related events that we'll have in our community. So I know we talked a little bit earlier about the Red House. Let's talk about exactly what, what big project this is. You mentioned Steve Strom was the one who said, let me build it, I'll take care of that. What has that entailed for him? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, um, we needed an architect, let okay. me say that, and uh, Ron Grojean from Grojean's Architects generously donated his time Wonderful. and his talents and, was the and is the architect for the um, project, and Chris Kaler is the engineer. Okay. Um, they both donated their time Wonderful. And, and the work. Um, Steve wor has been working with them, um, putting the plans together, how it would work. Um, the construction is very unique in that it is uh, French colonial, uh, French vertical construction as it was built back in 200, 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, Normandy Trust, um, the logs were 100 years old and plus. They were all donated from area residents. Oh, uh, the Walter family north of Jackson. They actually um, donated the materials. They Wonderful. donated the materials. Um, Wow. Uh, we've had so many people who donated their time and their efforts to tear the, the buildings down, to do the hauling. Um, I know I've seen messages donated. on Channel 5 asking for people to right. come help build the Red House. Right. Do they just show up and build, or how do you schedule that? Do you schedule work days, or how um, does that work? Work days now are, um, is it Mondays and Tuesday. Tuesdays? Or Not just Mondays. Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Right. Um, normally in the morning it gets uh, rather hot in the afternoon mm -hmm. and the men get tired. Um, the women too, we do have women <laughs> up there. Mm -hmm. um, it's all donated labor. Um, we have a, a, team, a team of workers that we're calling the red hat workers. The ones who come down who are faithful and steady and come on a regular mm -hmm. basis, they're awarded a red beret that says the red house on it and we're asking them to wear their hats uh, at official uh, you know, oh, when we wonderful. have meetings and things. Right. And they'll be wearing them uh, at the event as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but there have been, I think we have around 30, 30, 35 Red Hat That's volunteers who have actually done the sawing, the hammering, the lifting, mm -hmm. the pulling, the tugging, and everything. Right. Um, we have, uh, if you want to help work, mm -hmm. if you call uh, Stephen Strom, he's in the okay. phone book on Woodhaven, uh, he will set up a time for you. Anyone that has construction experience is mm -hmm. a plus, but if you don't have construction experience, we have a lot of mortar, stone, and brick that need to be f filled in in the walls. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. takes, it takes a good hour just to do a small portion of it. Oh, uh, and you have to learn the technique. It's not hard, but once you've got it, you've got it. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday we had some young people down working with Steve and, and filling in the, uh, between the logs. 
the the, it's just wonderful how the community is pulled together uh, because well, I'll get a phone call that says, I want to help, what can I do? Mm -hmm. And I'll say, well, you know, what would you like to? And they say, well, we can donate money or we oh, can do wonderful. donate our skills. Uh, so they'll, they'll contact me, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll kind of plug them into what they need to do, what they want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, some people don't want to get out and get their hands m muddy, you know, and, mm -hmm. and sticky. Some people want to be docents. When the museum opens, we need people to help us give tours. Mm -hmm. So that's another need for volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've had over a hundred people donate materials and funds up to about $36,000 right mm -hmm. now that we are using for matching funds for the grants. Mm -hmm. uh, the labor, the donated labor is a huge part of the matching funds on the grants. Uh, we've had uh, Missouri Dry Dock has helped us with a crane so mm -hmm. we could lift those huge A-frame uh, mm -hmm. trusses up on the roof. Uh, we had help building the, the, the roof, the back part of the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, Drury Southwest, uh, uh, Drury Company and the Columbia Company worked all last week getting that back side wow. of the roof done, which is a major, major mm -hmm. uh, donation. Mm -hmm. And Southwestern wow. Bell donated the uh, poles to right. be used for the, for the, the trust. Poles the for the trusses, the trusses, right. Um, let's see, who, we've had the Walther family donated their log house. Mm -hmm. They live up north of Jackson. Mm -hmm. uh, oh my, it, you know, the list is yeah. huge. Actually, the list is available to look at on the CVB website for okay. the Lewis and Clark Bicentennial, if people want to check that out. Um, the cash donations as well as all the material donations and the names of the people who've donated labor are on there. Uh, we have another site uh, with the southeastmissourian.com on the buzz. Mm -hmm. We post photographs of the house as it's being built. Mm -hmm. So if you live away and you're interested and you, you're on the internet, you can check the uh, buzz.com or the southeast Missourian, the buzz section mm -hmm. and, and see the progress of the house as it's Wonderful. being built. Wonderful. Yeah. Sounds like it's going to be a fantastic <coughs> facility and it will yes. be open for future tours and Absolutely. exhibits and that right. sounds fantastic. The exhibits will be inside the house and the exhibits will be movable so that if okay. a local organization would like to use the house like they would use any park facility, uh, they can work that out and use the house for an event or a special meeting or something like that as well. That is fantastic. Wow. Yeah. And. Um, uh, an interesting part about the museum, and I think a, a lot of people will be interested, will be the trading post itself. Um, the museum rooms are going to be on either side, and the trading post is in the center where the dog trot would, would be. Mm -hmm. And the, there will be items um, that would have been sold or traded back in 1803. Right. Um, Linda's using some of the list right. of what was in Lewis Lormer's inventory papers that right. we have at the Archive Center. Mm -hmm. yeah, we actually uh, have a list of what was in there. Of what, so. was, what was in his trading post. So she's trying right. to right. put some of those items yeah. in. That's fantastic. And there is something that I would like to make clear <laughs> from a historic <laughs> preservationist point of view. Um, the Red House is not a replica. Uh, I hear that term thrown around all the time. We are not replicating um, what Lormer's Red House looked like. Mm -hmm. um, we are, are inspired by what the trading post was and how it looked like. And this is what our concept of what a French heritage building would have looked like at that time. Okay. Um, we don't know why it was called the Red House. We don't know it was red or if there's some other thing that happened, mm -hmm. maybe the, the Native American trading or, or whatever. Um, but because it is known as the Red House, we are giving it a tin of red. Okay. Um, but we do want to understood that this is not a replica. We are not reconstructing. No. Um, this is just an inspiration of, the, of the, the trading post. The only thing we know for absolute sure is that it was a French colonial right. style house it, with it the was vertical, vertical logs. logs. That's the only thing we know for sure. Mm -hmm. We have a sketch uh, that dates from about 1870 from the memory of uh, Sarah Doherty who lived in the house. Her husband, she and her husband owned the house for a period of time and she wow. had been in Lorimer's house when she was a child. Mm -hmm. So, and on what's written on the papers that we have says mm -hmm that this was, a, was built in the French style with mm -hmm. the vertical logs. Uh, we do not know the dimensions of the house. We made it 20 by 40 
because we thought that would suit our purpose as well. Mm -hmm. And then of course we have, we need to follow the city codes in the building of the house. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't use certain, some of the things that would have been used in right. the original house. Okay. This is just an interpretive center to give people the feel of what was life like in mm -hmm. 1803 in the Cape Girardeau right. district. Sure. And it just so happens that Lewis and Clark stopped by for a day. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot more that was yeah. going on exactly. in, the, in the district. And exactly. we're trying to show that with our panels mm -hmm. and our maps and we're working closely right. with the Archive Center mm -hmm. and the Red House uh, Interpretive Center to have make those materials available to the general public so mm -hmm. they can see what life was like in 1803. Sounds wonderful. It's going to be awesome. Brenda, you mentioned something earlier about the Discovery Tour. Can you tell yes. us about what that is? And um, if that's the Corps of Discovery II um, is an exhibit put together by the National Park Service mm -hmm. that's touring uh, the United States. Okay. Um, Cape Girardeau is um, one of its stops. It will be mm -hmm. coming here November 3rd, no, I'm not, 30th. Sorry, November 30th mm -hmm. through December the 6th. 4th. No, Fourth? yeah, November 30th through December 4th. Fourth, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it will be set up at um, is it Westfield Shopping Town. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called now? Westfield <laughs> Shopping Town West uh, Park. They have agreed that to let us set up there. Um, it's a huge exhib exhibit. It's full of displays, museums, videos. Um, it has the uh, Tent of Many Voices, where uh, Native Americans can tell their story mm -hmm. of uh, what the um, Corps of Discovery meant to them. Okay. Um, this isn't so much a celebration for them as it is a commemoration. Right. Um, okay. What else would you like to say about the Corps II? Okay, the Corps II... It's, it's huge. It, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, semi, a big semi-truck mm -hmm. with a wonderful painting on the outside of the truck, mm -hmm. two large tents, one tent, when you go in, they give you a headset and you can do a walk around. It's in a circle. So you walk around the beautiful paintings on mm -hmm. the inside of the tent depicting the expedition. Mm -hmm. And then you go from that tent into the tent of many voices and the National Park Service will participate in programming on that. The Native Americans will be involved in programming and we can also have local programming as mm -hmm. well. And we're working with the Missouri Department of Conservation and the Department of Natural Resources out of Jefferson City to make sure that we have excellent programming going on mm -hmm. at that time. And these uh, area schools will be uh, will want to come and visit this right. uh, as well right. as just regular right. citizens. It'll be open during the day. And mm -hmm. then in the evening, <clears throat> we're working with um, trying to get a Native American, excuse me, <coughs> Native American group uh, called Spirit to come at the same time as the Corps II. Mm -hmm. And we're working with the city on a location for that to be set up. It, w it is a huge 150-foot uh, diameter tent and, and a stage self-contained so that the public would, would to, can purchase tickets to come and, and mm -hmm. uh, see the performance. But it's Native Americans from across the United States who've come together and put together a fantastic show wow. called Spirit. It has been on PBS. And I caught part of it, and I, oh, I went, ooh, I, I have goosebumps. You know, so, so that's a, another possibility. So that would be the the bicentennial weekend for us is November 21 through 23, mm -hmm. and the following weekend, uh, November 30th through December 4th, then the core two would be here as, and hopefully the the spirit group will also be here. Okay, well, fantastic. Sounds like there's a lot of different events. If someone has a question about what what's going on, who should they contact? They can either contact myself or Jane at right. the archives. Right. Uh, our phone number is not in the book. Uh, hopefully it will be in the coming edition. <laughs> okay. uh, so our phone number is 204-2331 at the Cape Girardeau County Archives Center. Okay. Well, Just ask you. for Jane. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you both for being here today. I appreciate thank you, you sharing your information. And thank you at home for watching. And we hope you'll join us next time on City Source.